What is going on everybody and welcome back again to Key Points and today we're going to be talking about ACI. It's going to be ACI deep diving into the labs. We are going to be dissecting the APIC, the configuration, the initial discovery and something which is called access policies. My name is Ahmad Mufta, I'm a technical training and design manager in Cisco and we are about to watch and learn. Hit the like button, share and subscribe to get more information and more videos from Key Points. All right, well, let's get going. And I'm going to start by geeking out. Yeah, it's time to geek out. It's just time to dive into the ACI fabric. So let's just see what's going to happen when we try to configure and connect those ACI devices together. So here we go. We have our ACI. Look at that. Look at that. We have a bunch of leaf switches four leaf switches to be exact we have a couple of spines connected together in a spine and leaf topology and we have three apex in a cluster all right so what's going to happen you're touching this aci fabric for the first time you're trying to configure it you're trying to get the apex connected to the rest of the devices and to start the configuration of course well first thing we're gonna subdivide these steps into a series of different tasks that the ACI itself is going to do. Oh, wait a second. Yes, this is automated. That's the beauty of SDN, Software Defined Networking, is everything is going to have to, be, it's going to be automated. Uh, magic, right? Well, it's not really magic because there are some or few things that you have to do by yourself. Okay, so let's just face it, it's things that have to be done by you. First of all, you got to do some proper cabling. Now, what do you mean? Well, of course, those devices will not get connected by itself. So make sure that you are following the exact spine and leaf topology. As you can see it right here, we have spines connected to leaves, leaves connected to spines. Good, great. That, that's a good thing. But what about the Apex? Where do we connect that Apex controller? The Apex controller, whether we're talking here about one Apex, which is very risky, or we're talking about a cluster of three, five, or seven. Here we have three. They're going to get connected to the leaf switches and leaf switches only. How many cables, how many interfaces, and how do we do that? And how do we connect the cluster together? Well, first of all, here is what the APIC is going to look like. This is the rear end for, uh, rear view of that APIC controller. And we have something which is called the Bond Zero WIC card, or the, uh, not WIC card, the Bond Z Zero Line card, which is a bunch of ports and we have some other ports as well but we're going to focus on bond zero specifically so look at that bond zero has four ports i'm gonna just number them one all right one two three and four and you have some colors here i'll help you with some colors so that you can understand exactly which one of these four ports is going to be used from the bond zero interface so what is the bond zero line card is going to be used for mainly it's going to be used to connect your apic to the leaf switches. Leafs and Apex are going to communicate through this bond zero interfaces. How many interfaces exactly? You can only need a couple of interfaces. One active, oh yeah, active is in green, and the other is a standby interface. So you're going to pick two, whether these are odd numbers or even numbers. Okay, so it's either one and three or two and four. All right, well, let's say that we have chosen two and four. The one in green is your active interface. The one, the other one in yellow is your backup or standby interface. So that's your proper cabling in one hand. And then in the other hand, you got to make sure that you configure a cluster. Cable those cluster devices together. So how is it going to work? This is going to be your bond zero. You know, let me just write it down over here. It's not measured. This is your bond zero. Oh, sorry. Did I say zero? Bond zero has already been taken. This is bond one line card uh, the bottom one bond one these two friends right here these are the bond one interfaces this is these are the interface you can pick one that's enough and connect that interface to the rest of the other apex in the same family so what's gonna happen oh here we go they're gonna get connected together and this is your out of band management interface which is just gonna be you know uh you're gonna beard these devices together using any kind of uh, traditional switch just to connect all these three ports together and you will be able to connect to this uh, to these apex however we have not configured the out of band management ip address yet and this is what we are about to do when we start with step number one. Oh, that was step zero the step that we just mentioned right here was just step zero so then you see here the green and yellow uh cables this is coming from bond zero of course towards the leaf switches fine cool what is your step number one step number one is going to be also your responsibility. Well, what? I thought you said something is automatic here until now. 
step zero, <laughs> I did something. Step one, I did, I'm going to do something as well. Yeah, that's the only couple of steps that you're going to do some uh, effort. All right, let's just face it. You have to do something. Come on. You're getting paid at the end of the month, right? <laughs> so the APIC initial setup, wh wh what is that going to look like? We're going to talk about it in the next few minutes. This is an e initial setup for the three APICs that you have. This is not going to take more than five minutes, or even less than five minutes. That's just a dialogue that you have to answer. Boom, your APIC has been configured. That's it. Rest of the other steps. That's all gonna be automatic. Watch it. Okay, so step number two, what's gonna happen exactly? Let me clear this gibberish right here. Step number two, this is where the APIC, the first APIC, we're talking here mainly about the first APIC. Let's say, just imagine that this guy here is my first APIC, the master APIC, the first one that was configured. Cool. What is it gonna do? It's gonna start sending LLDP messaging messages, and it's gonna also receive LLDP message to who? To the very first leaf. Assuming that leaf number 101 is my first leaf here in this example, and you can see the green cable here, which means that this is the active interface. So this is gonna be my first. So who guaranteed that leaf number one is gonna be my active, uh, or like the first leaf, or the second leaf, or the what? Is it based on numbers? No, it's not. It's just based on the first switch that was just connected to that cable the f first one comes uh that comes up for uh, oh, lost my words the first leaf that just gets powered on and gets connected to the apic it's the one that gets discovered first using those ldp messages the apic and the leaf they're both gonna send and receive ldp messages to get to know each other once they have come to know each other then your next step would be hmm again <clears throat> manual step oh, again manual yeah you, you just got to register those devices in the epic gui so you're gonna go to the gui oh now after you've configured the epic with a bunch of ip uh, with a management ip you can just open a browser web browser to that out of band management uh, ip address and then be able to open the gui of that epic and register the first leaf register the first leaf give it a name give it a number that's it that's the only thing you need to do after the switch has been configured the first leaf has been configured this is where a dhcp message dhcp messages are going to be sent and received oh dhcp discovery by the leaf and then dhcp offer by the apic to give that leaf an ip address from something which is called a vtep pool that was configured in the initial setup script but that VTEP pool, virtual tunnel endpoint, something related to VXLAN. Yes, we're going to talk about it later on. But hey, now the switch has an IP address. Now the switch is registered. It's discovered. It has an IP. Well, guess what? What are we going to do, Mr. Leaf 101? Can you please help me discover the rest of the other switches in the ACI fabric? Well, duh, yeah, I can. So I'm going to relay who's talking. The first Leaf, Leaf 101, is trying to relay more LLDP messages, but this time to the next device. What is the next device? This is gonna be my first spine. Okay, whichever spine that, received that receives that first LLDP message is gonna be my, the, uh, you know, the spine that gets discovered. When that spine has been discovered thanks to LDP message relays that, you know, were done by the leaf, that's originated first by the apic, then sent to the to the leaf, and then all the way to the spine, and then also the spine is going to do the same thing until it reaches the apic. So what's going to happen next? Well, guess what? It's going to be the exact same process, which is going to repeat itself again. All the you know first five steps, it's going to be repeated with the rest of the other switches within the apic until the entire uh, within the ACI fabric until the entire ACI fabric has been discovered and registered. Now everybody has an IP right every single switch in this fabric has an ip so now what they're gonna do they're gonna become layer three neighbors and what other than isis routing protocol to just help in forming that neighborship this is your default and only you're not you're not choosing anything this is all happening automatically so isis is gonna get established between all those switches and that's gonna happen they're neighbors they can forward their traffic later on, but now they, dis they they have discovered one another. These switches have discovered one another. So the first, the first five or six steps, the epic was trying to discover the switches, but then in step number seven, thanks to ice ice, the switches are able to discover one another by the ice ice reachability. Now they are layer three neighbors. What's going to happen next? More LDP messages are going to be forwarded amongst the leaf switches and the rest of the other apex within the cluster because we were talking first about the master apex so what's going to happen later the 
Two other Apex are going to receive LDP messages to inform them. Oh, of course, you are here to support. So let me just tell you about the rest of the family that has been discovered by our first Apex. And then you get to join hands. The three Apex get to join hands together and become an Apex, an, a real Apex cluster with all the configuration being uh, scattered across all the Apex members. Is, it, is that it? Well, one more step, which is going to be based on configuration that is going to happen later. Oh, what is that step? That has to do with data plane. All of what we've just mentioned right now was representing control plane, right? I, you see the red color here, LDP, DHCP, and ISIs? These are the control plane protocols. These represent control plane. But then what about data plane? Your data plane is going to be VXLAN. VXLAN tunnels are going to be established between each and every leaf switch in that fabric to help in forwarding the data plane traffic. That's going to be based on your configuration later on, based on the policies that you're going to configure later on. But then for now, you need to know that this is representing, VX9 technology represents my data plane. And every single packet in the ACI fabric is going to be carried or it's going to be encapsulated within a VXLAN header because that's how the VTAP, or VTAP devices communicate using those VXLAN tags and whichever kind of payload that is being sent by the devices with outside the fabric, which, which are endpoints, that's going to be double tagged or tagged with a VXLAN header on the way, in the way in. And then on the way out, it's going to be decapsulated. The VXLAN tag is going to be removed and it's going to get back to its original nature. Now that the APEC has discovered its fabric and all the switches have become neighbors, now what's going to be the next step? The next step is to show you the power of automation using access policies. Oh, what was that? Can you translate, please? Oh, yeah. Get the servers connected to your leaf switches. Get those servers connected. Get the endpoints connected to the data center. That's what we are here for. Originally, I want to I want to just connect those servers to the fabric. Oh, how's that going to work? First of all, make sure you remember this rule. Everything gets connected to the leaf switches, mainly. Spines will get connected to some other devices. Later on, we're going to talk about that. But for now, every single device is going to get connected to the leaf switches. So, including servers, whether these are physical or virtual machines. Now, let's assume that we have this server right here which is getting connected to interface one slash one and that's going to be trunked in vlan 600 all the way to 700 yeah assuming that uh do it configure it. well that's easy cli or GUI. Oh, mainly we're going to be doing it from the gui but then it's just one server easy no problem i'm gonna do it uh, one more server, please. Uh, no problem i'm still gonna uh, 10 servers 20 servers hundreds of servers ah becomes boring <laughs> I'm going to repeat myself over and over again. This is going to take a while. Well, this is what ACI was invented for. Automation. To configure something once, and that's going to be taken care of for the rest of the yeah, lifetime, <laughs> if I may say so. Yeah, configure what is called access policy. That if you were to repeat the configuration across as many switches or as many ports as you might have, this is going to be done automatically as soon as you plug those servers to the interfaces of those different switches. Well, how's that going to happen? A bunch of configuration. An access policy, which is a bunch of steps, which is going to lead to a solid, redund a solid piece of configuration, which is going to repeat itself. But you have to spend some time in order, in order to build a sequential policy, a sequential hierarchical policy, which is going to be combined. It's going to be blended in one blender and it's going to be distributed across as many ports and as many switches that you might have in your ACI fabric. How's it going to work? Well, six steps to be accurate. Oh, show me. Well, first of all, configure your VLANs of choice. You, you just said here VLAN 600, 700, assuming that this is the numbers. First of all, configure those VLANs in a trunk fashion. It could be access if you want it, but like most, most of the time it's going to be a trunk, uh, you know, trunk interfaces carrying lots and multiple VLANs because who knows, maybe in the future you might have more VLANs. Okay, well, that's good. What next? Choose your domain. When you choose your domain, you want to make one of three choices or a choice between three different domains. Is this server going to be a physical bare metal server or is it going to be a virtual machine or are you trying to connect your leave to an external domain? One of three choices. Here we're assuming that this is a physical bare metal server, so I'm going to do that step as well. But wait a second, this is sequential and hierarchical steps, which, which means, which means you're going to combine one step in another. You're going to nest, that's the right word. You're going to nest one step in the other. 
until you form a chain. Okay, well, I've configured VLANs and then domains. What's gonna happen? Nest your first step into the second step. Exactly, this is what's gonna happen from the GUI. Now what's next? Third, you're gonna attach, you're gonna, oh, configure something which is called AEP, Attachable Entity Profile. Sometimes we call it the Attachable Access Entity Profile, AEP for short. What, what does it do? It's something which joins separate entities. It, it joins separate chunks of configuration together. Think about it like the activate button. Think about it like, hmm, when you configure an access control list, for example, let's just go old school. When you configure an access list, the access list is configured, but it never gets activated until you activate this under the interface. It ne never takes effect until you just activate it under the interface. Something similar to this kind, the attachable entity profile, the AAP, is how you want to activate all the configuration that you are combining in this access policy. Without it, the access policy is never going to work. So make sure that you configure this. First or last or in the middle, doesn't really matter, but don't forget the AAP. Then what? Nest. Again, look at that. We're still nesting. Every single step is going to include a nest of the other uh, previous steps. Then what happens next? Well, we need to configure the protocols. We need to configure something which is called interface policy groups, which is going to include all the protocols that need to be activated in those interfaces connected to the servers. Those servers are going to be configured with a bunch of protocols such as well, LDP, the speed, the duplex, the MTU, uh, is it a port channel, CDP, whatever protocol that you wish to activate under all those ports connected to those different servers, you want to group them in what we call interface policy group. Even if it's a single protocol that you need to activate, that still has to be activated in an interface policy group. And uh, don't forget, what's the next step? Nest. Nest the previous steps into the interface policy group. You see here? Okay, you got you got it? That, that's how we do it. And then the fifth and second last step, this is where you configure what we call interface profile. You've been talking and talking and talking about interfaces. What are those interfaces? Well, call these interfaces up, and these interfaces are going to be called up using interface profiles. Whichever interface, coming from whichever switch, call those switch, uh, call those interfaces and combine them in an interface profile and nest, of course, nest the previous steps into this step. And then finally, call up the switches. Yeah, call up the switches, create a switch profile to mention which switches exactly will activate those policies. So mention the switches and then nest your <laughs> previous policies into that final switch profile. Th these different six steps in a chain, can, th this will give you what we call an access policy. It might seem a lot. It's going to take a, a while until you just master it. Let's just be honest. But you can vary it once. And then if you have similar servers within the exact same VLANs, you just plug them and you watch the magic happen. And that's the power of automation. Well, that's what ACI does thanks to the application-centric infrastructure and the APIC, of course. Who? Key points for today. All right, let's recap. LLDP, DSCP, and ISIS represent your control plane, and this is going to be automatic within your ACI fabric after the discovery takes place, thanks to the APIC. Well, of course, you should have done some kind of initial setup manual, of course. And then what happens? The fabric is going to be forwarding traffic based on VXLAN. Data forwarding is based on VXLAN, and this is going to be using VXLAN tunnels amongst the VTEPs, which are the switches. And don't forget, ACI Fabric Discovery is indeed automatic. We've already seen that in eight different steps, and some of which were actually manual, as I said. The access policies, all right. Access policies are here to connect your endpoints. Whether these endpoints are physical, bare metal servers, or virtual machines, or maybe external devices, you're going to configure those access policies to just help you save time. Exactly, this is what access policy does it saves time Whew. if you've watched that much you must like this video and if you like the video then hit the like button and share it and subscribe yeah yeah you're watching and you're learning thanks for watching right right write me in the comment section and tell me more about the next topic that you want from me ask me questions i'll be more than happy to assist you and to help you and then until next time Take care of yourself and keep studying more. Thanks for watching.